on, guys? Joe here from Pluto TV. I'm here with the guys from Crack.com. What's going on, guys? Hello. Hey, yeah, hi. Hi. Hello. I am also saying hello. <laughs> and me too. All right, I'm here with Jack and Dan O'Brien, Soren Bowie, and Michael Swaim from Crack.com. Guys, uh, why don't we just go around and talk about each of your roles at Crack.com? Let's start with uh, Jack, and uh, Jack and Brian. I'm the editor-in-chief of Cracked. I am head writer and creative director of video for Cracked. And you guys? Yeah, I do uh, a performer, editor, and writer for Cracked. All that stuff, but like the dumb guy version. <laughs> Michael, I like to think that you're the face of Cracked sometimes. I like to think that. My, <laughs> my mom loves to think that, so let's all agree to that. That's fine. All right, well, uh, you know, we're here at Stanley Kamikaze 2014. Uh, you know, what's the experience been like? You guys just had a panel earlier. Um, so what was that like for you guys? The, the panel is always a, a really good time. Uh, we get to do the after hours panel and really connect with the fans who like the show. And it's always humbling because we get together and we write these episodes and then meet the fans. And their ideas are so much better than ours. These people who are just passionate about movies and TV the same way that we are. And to hear them like, Hey, you said this in an episode. Have you considered this other fact? I'm like, no, we didn't. You're much better. You should have my job, but you don't. So eat it. <laughs> and then we steal their ideas yeah. and yeah. turn them into episodes. Yeah. I love that. What about you guys? I thought it was really fun. I mean, we every time that we do a panel, it's always really nice to meet all the people who actually enjoy our show. Because when on the internet, you don't get to see them. It's just a number that exists next to every single video. It's just. Oh, so 150,000 people watch this. I don't know what that means. And then you meet them, and it's like, oh, okay, you're the actual people who enjoy this. Yeah, it's tough to build your ego off of an imaginary room full of people. It's really candy that Kamikaze exists to assemble them for me to go like, oh, okay, that many people like the thing. Okay, great, there you are. Hello. It's very nice. All of you are dressed as Deadpool. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> or Doctor Who. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so like, what was discussed at the panel? What was featured at, uh, at the panel uh, earlier today, guys? We workshopped uh, uh, an episode of After Hours in real time for the people, and we talked about the, a very broad topic of just what fictional company would be best or worst to work for, just the, like trying to extrapolate from the way people who work for the Empire in Star Wars were treated like they're so well-dressed, they're working for a clearly evil company, and they're building two Death Stars for them, you must be getting paid pretty well if you're going to do something that, like, morally bankrupt. So I kind of want to work for them because they must have benefits if they're still getting these people year after year, Death Star after Death Star. But they did two entire Death Stars after the first one blew up. So they took care of those first people's families so well. Yeah. So it was just kind of thinking through the implications of stuff like that. Yeah. It's almost like that argument from Clerks, right? Yeah, yeah. The, the Clerks is... is like the spiritual grandfather to Cracked, I think, the conversation that they have on that show, yeah. We've actually always really wanted to get Kevin Smith to just lean over at the end of an episode and, like, correct everyone on something. That would be a great moment for us. Uh, yeah, very much Clerks and very much uh, the opening diner scene of Reservoir Dogs. We've always thought yeah, about Yeah, Quentin Tarantino in general, yeah. Quentin yeah. Tarantino, in every single one of his movies, he has something about Superman. Or he deconstructs some element of pop culture that's exactly what we're doing. But that's all we do, as opposed to all the fight scenes, which would purely be... A cool thing to add to Cracked if we could do it. Off camera. I, I like to imagine that all three of your characters are murderers in your spare time, <laughs> but, you know, we don't have the budget for killing people. I love it. All right, uh, let's talk about uh, your um, latest uh, web series, Monster Management. What can you tell us about that, guys? Um, I Well, it was Halloween time, and we wanted to do something spooky because uh, we always have a big month because we have so many pieces of horror content and th that and like uh, I'm blanking on every single word that I want to no, use well, like but like people come back because we have like uh, the same kinds of spooky Halloween content every single year that they love and, and uh, can trust from us we want to do something with videos um, and I'm the I think our, our PR person is nearby but PR and branding is uh, has always been very silly to me mostly because we'll talk to large corporations when they want to spend money on the site and like hi I represent a fictional soda company called Pepsi, uh, and we want to know what kind of articles you can write to tie into Pepsi. Here's the theme of our message. Pepsi is like your edgy, cool, older brother who, like, <laughs> smokes cigarettes, but don't mention cigarettes, and they're extreme. <laughs> like, what can you tell us about Pepsi? Because for the snowboarding demographic who likes extreme Pepsi, and, like, this is how brands are talking about their products, and it's like, oh, 
Pepsi is like a is like a sweet water that hurts your teeth to me. That's you're not snowboarders at all. So I just took the idea of how silly I thought branding was and applied that to uh, monsters. We talked about like Frankenstein. You can't Ten million dollar ad buy. You realize that's. <laughs> <laughs> we like to do I mean we we always try and in every single one of our series try to add some element of the of pop culture that you hadn't really thought about before we did that with the Harry Potter series we did that with right. all of our other series and we do with this one we didn't want to just do oh this is our take on vampires we want to do well here's here's vampires here's uh, Frankenstein but also here's like a real horror in the world which are these like slick PR people who are <laughs> who are very scary <laughs> hey Colin <laughs> It, but the basic idea in a log line, since that's my job, is that it's like if these famous iconic horror movie monsters had an agency like the one you see in Entourage behind them, sort of managing their careers and responding to failures like I, Frankenstein, and, you know, taking credit for successes like Twilight, making vampires sexy, that was their idea. So um, that's, that's the idea, other than Colin being evil. Yeah. I want to make it clear. I don't want any money from Pepsi. <laughs> <laughs> I'll uh, <laughs> wash your hands with that one. All right, uh, After Hours. I'm like a huge fan of After Hours. I love that series. Um, what can you guys tell me from After Hours? Well, actually, yeah. What can you guys tell me about the future of After Hours? Who is anyone going to die? It's one of these guys, right? I don't want to. I don't want to spoil it, but uh, yeah, both of them. <laughs> both of them. <laughs> um. I think if any, well, wait, oh, yeah, you, I know what you're talking about. We kind of do. It's funny you mention that. There's an episode coming out about epilogues, and I think the epilogues actually foretell the entire lives of the characters in some small ways. I don't know if it's canon, though. Um, but w at the panel we did today, we unveiled a new episode we got coming out that just sort of ruins Forrest Gump. So if you like Forrest Gump, look forward to an episode of After Hours that will make you not like it anymore. And feel kind of weird about having watched it and ever liked it. It actually made me like, oh, I liked Forrest Gump. Is something wrong with me? That's what I realized with every <laughs> single one of our After Hours episodes is that we always start with, with something that we love. We start with Batman. We start with Spider-Man. We start with something. And then as we deconstruct it and take it apart, by the end, inevitably, we don't like it as much anymore because now it, it, there's all these other implications in the world of, in which the uni or the universe in which it exists that are like, well, wait a second, why, why is Batman just dressing up like that? He could yeah. do so much more as Bruce Wayne to save that city. Well, I find with uh, uh, history, science, and nature, we always discover stuff that makes everything cooler. And with uh, movies and TV, we discover stuff that you're like, wait a minute, that's racist. <laughs> like 80% of the time, that's what it boils down to. Wake up, people! <laughs> Will we ever see Coen Brothers, Dan? One for Coen Brothers. I know you've been probably wanting to do that one, right? Here, here's what's what's neat about this is that uh, Michael is the biggest Coen Brothers fan in the world, and oh, he is really? just yeah, he has just made it like Dan's thing. People come up to me and they're people don't come up to me on the street. People come up to me <laughs> at at panels and and they're like, man, we wa I want to see that Coen Brothers too. It's a shame they won't let you. And it's like, yeah, no, I love the Cornyn Brothers. I'm a big <laughs> fan. <laughs> Good. <laughs> I'm a huge Cohen fanboy, as is Abe Epperson, uh, one of our directors on the site. But uh, that's a really funny point, is ev we all write scripts for the show, and we all write scripts for all the shows, and there's all kinds of stuff that they're like, uh, oh, Soren, you're like this, and you like this, and you're like, I guess because Cody said I did once, and now everyone thinks that's true, so... Yeah. Right. Yeah. There's. We all have. I uh, certainly. Dan came into this already liking Spider-Man an awful lot. So we just sort of played with that. But now, like, we were all lumped in. Ne Michael has Pixar, which is like apparently his dream baby. And and when people come and like, oh, I got more Pixar theories for you. He's like, I don't. I don't. Hey, yeah. Dan wrote that. <laughs> I don't. Yeah. Um. Yeah. For me, it's James Bond. I didn't. I haven't watched a lot of James Bond. <laughs> and then I did an entire episode about James Bond, which I'm the only one who defends him. And now people come up to me and they're like, thank you for standing up for James Bond. And I go, y you're welcome. Yeah. And that's what's great about uh, having a fan base that's nerds, because like when you, it was funny on the panel, we try to be super engaged in pop culture and stuff, but there's still people coming up and going like, you know what would be a bad place to work? The blah blah exo corporation. And you're like, I uh, look down the panel like, does anyone know what universe that's from? What fictional universe is that from? They just know more about it than we do. And it's, <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, it's lovely that they, that they like what we do and like they, they, we're actually still Sco uh, like scooting under the radar for them that like we were accepted into that sort of culture but, but man they know so much more about it than we do <laughs> <laughs> right, 
the second Forrest Gump episode. <laughs> it's like, uh, we've only seen, like, so many movies, guys. Like, we don't know any of your culture. Sorry. Oh, man, so they make you guys look like idiots, don't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> every, every, every day. day yeah. <laughs> I realize how much older I'm getting, and soon pop culture won't be for me anymore. And that's fine. Then I'll just die. But today on the panel, someone mentioned, oh, what about this corporation? What's that from? Oh, it's from Infamous. All right, comic book, movie. Oh, it's for this video. It's a video game system that you didn't even know existed. Right. Like, oh, okay. No, they don't, they don't sell that at Marshall's where I shop. <laughs> <laughs> no, fans can be cruel, I know, man. Uh, well, Jack, this is more for you. Uh, tell us about the evolution of crack. You know, it started out as this, as this magazine, like this satirical uh, comical magazine, and now it's this big web, a multimedia website with video content. You know, like, just tell us about the evolution of how that went from magazine to to website with articles to video content. Just yeah, I'll that one. <laughs> <laughs> Someone wants to steal the light here. Um, so I wasn't there for the when it was kind of the poor man's version of Mad Magazine, uh, but I was brought on to kind of launch the web portion of it after uh, it was shuttered during the 2001 terror attacks. That's a true story. It was in the building that the anthrax shut down. Uh, so the terrorists tried to shut us down, I think I was saying, and uh, I was hired to launch the web presence. Uh, when I first started it, it was like 50% of my job and uh, you know nobody else was on the team and we were just kind of putting stuff on the web that made us laugh. And then uh, as it kind of took off, we just hired people one at a time who were like the funniest people I could find writing anywhere on the internet. And you know, these are them and uh, you know, their DNA is sort of part of what, what makes you like Cracked, I guess, if you really like Cracked and aren't lying. <laughs> oh, no, I love Cracked. No, that's awesome, yeah. All right, no, like, um, so, like, okay, so, you know, now, like, online video is just taking off. Everybody's watching that nowadays. Hardly anyone is, like, watching cable these days. And you guys are a big forefront for online video. Like, uh, where do you guys think that's going as far as, like, new media and, like, entertainment goes? Like let's every, uh, in your own words, like down the line. Let's start with you, Jack. Back to cable. I think this internet <laughs> thing's a flash in the pan. Uh, Giant satellite. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, I think you know it's clearly going to YouTube, um, but I think it's you know becoming more democratic and kind of more interesting. People are breaking down. You know, interacting with fans. Like these cons are just sort of live action versions of what's happening, you know, on YouTube every day with people, you know, interacting, you see a comment, you, the person, your favorite, like, star or talent, like, then responds to you. Uh, so I think it's becoming more interactive uh, and just kind of a more interesting place. Yeah. I think we're going to hit some strange, um, very interesting tipping point or some kind of clash because there are a lot of creators who have been on the internet for so long that are that for a long time it was oh you do internet 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 and then you jump to movies and tv right. that's not the case anymore people hannah hart and grace helbig can make a movie and release it online and and reach all of their fans people don't really have a reason to leave the internet we're also seeing a whole lot of uh actual old school media types getting onto the internet now from tv because they realize there's more freedom and there's more reach there so something Strange is going to happen when it when, when there's less of a division between strictly internet creators and people who came from TV to do internet stuff. I think I don't know if we're gonna like swap swap bodies or something or, or or build a separate internet. I have no idea what's going to happen. It's just that it's going to be very interesting when this line that's already very very thin between internet and television is completely dissolved. Yeah. Jordan? Yeah, I think that the line between television and internet will just become much more amalgamous, and, and the two things will become much more connected. So, like, we went to the Webbies recently, right. and at the Webbies, a lot of the presenters and the people that are winning awards were people from Orange is the New Black. Uh, and so you realize that that's somebody's favorite television show, technically, is an internet show. It's something that they're only viewing right. on Netflix. So we're going to have much more longer-form stuff on the internet. And I think on television, you'll have much more intermixing of people from uh, who start out on the internet. So it'll just become, we'll all start crossbreeding, and we'll become... Kind of like one race. <laughs> Michael? That's always your goal, man. <laughs> and I feel like, yeah, I feel like uh, eventually there won't be a differentiation really between your TV and your computer in the house. I mean, like I'm talking far future. You'll just have a, the screen 
you know? Uh, and I like to, th I think Dan's right, we'll just have everything. It'll be the whole, every option's available to you. And it sort of reminds me of like a return to like the Medici's or like Renaissance form of patronage where even if you, like I, you can do a, dis a disparate bunch of things and you don't need the studio system to find you enough people to pay for you to do that. You can literally reach out one at a time on the internet and if you can find enough of an audience that you can pay rent with this thing, you're done now. You don't have to become a movie star. You could do your weird cake YouTube show until, you d until everyone's sick of it. So like whatever thing people want to do, uh, they can just do it. And I still think you'll have all the big players who will sort of filter, well, this is what middle America wants, so you become a huge celebrity. But then you'll have everything else under the sun. If you want to see this, it's there. This guy does the show. There he is. And that'll be great. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, there you have it. The guys from Crack, Jack, Dan, Soren, and Michael. Thanks, guys. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Phrase, or were you saying it's a cake show? Weird cake thing? Cake show on YouTube? Yeah, we don't have to dwell on it. <laughs> I'm working on a weird show. We're about to perform for a bunch of young people. I needed to know if weird cake was like the thing. <laughs> uh, they're, a, they're a postmodern cake cover band. Very strange. Yeah. All right, thanks, guys. I really appreciate it. All right, uh, this is Joe from Pluto.tv. Thanks for joining, and watch what's possible. We'll see you next time.